everyone. Thank you for joining today's Hindu University of America webinar on chakra healing, gratitude, and consciousness. We have Dr. Sahela joining us from New Jersey, and we have many of you from joining around the world. If you haven't yet, please put in the chat where you are zooming in from. Nitinji from Houston, thank you for joining. Roseanne from Washington, um, Josnaji and Rashikji uh, from Torrance, Los Angeles, Fremont, California, represented by Lata Ji. Thank you for joining. Ruchi from New York, uh, Zina Ji from New Jersey, Portland. Thank you for coming here, Shanti Ji. Drapi, Drapi Ji from New Jersey. Nice group of folks for today's webinar. So let us get started on gratitude and consciousness. What a beautiful topic and concept and comparing it, uh, connecting it, synergizing it with chakra healing and how we get into that. So are you ready to embark on a journey of self-discovery and abundance? Uh, dive deep into the conversations of these two wonderful women. We have Dr. Sahila and Jyotima Prasadji who will also join us. They're visionaries who have given their life into spreading this message. Genuinely happy people derive happiness not only from their own success, but also from a state of gratitude. It comes from a heart-centered energy where contentment and satisfaction exist from within. So in other words, you can be genuinely happy for others only when you are truly happy with yourself. So in this webinar, we're going to explore those concepts um, and get into that conversation. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar. And so let me introduce Dr. Sahila, Dr. Nirmala Chetty, Shetty. Uh, Dr. Sahilaji is actually an internal medicine doctor. Uh, she's a founder of Wellness with Sahila. It's a pi it's a pioneering organization. Uh, she herself is a pioneer among U.S. trained doctors for integrating modern medicine with Indian sciences like yoga, Ayurveda, and chakras. She's written and published various books, including Chakra Handbook, The Why Behind Cancer. Satvic Diet for U.S., and is currently working on books related to obesity, science of Kundalini, 21 Steps to Reprogram Your Mind, and she's working on so much more. She completed her MBBS from the prestigious MS uh, Ramaya College in Bangalore and moved on to do her residency training in New Jersey. So after working almost 15 years in the United States at five different hospitals, she decided to switch her focus from disease care to wellness. We see this big trend going on across uh, medicine and especially Western medicine now. By combining her experiences as a physician, along with her research on Raja Yoga and particularly on Yoga Chakras, she has helped hundreds of people reverse their illness and achieve wellness. Some of you in attendance today probably know her from her uh, courses that she teaches and uh, Pro, uh, practices that she's been providing for, I think, years now. So Dr. Sela has coached thousands of students in the USA and other parts of the world, including India and Australia, via a wide variety of online wellness program. And we are glad to have her as a faculty member at Hindu University of America, teaching uh, now multiple courses, developing this whole program and helping us to bring this gratitude and consciousness, this framework, this chakra healing um, knowledge to the public. So we're glad to have you with us today. She also supports many philanthrop philanthropic projects from orphan kids and abandoned elders in India by raising money through her wellness organization. So she really is about paying it forward, working together and um, sharing this knowledge and wisdom. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Dr. Sahila. Let me give a shout out to a few more people who joined us and put in the chat. Shanti G from Portland, uh, Sudham G from Cupertino, Bay Area, uh, Jardari G from North Carolina, Dilip G from Maryland, Shanta G, yes, glad to have you on. Shanta G, it was great seeing you at the Ayurveda and Yoga uh, retreat we had at Pine Lake a few weeks ago. Shanta G, special shout out to you. Great to have you on. Uh, Lila Ji from uh, Lila Vati Ji from Chennai, <coughs> glad to have you on. Namaste, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. And with that, let me hand it to Dr. Sahila Ji to get us started on today's webinar. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ankur. Thank you, everyone, for um, joining this um, uh, special webinar here. And uh, thank you. First, first of all, thank you to Hindu University of America for um, enlightening me and everyone here on um, so many wonderful um, Indian sciences that we were unaware of. And today we're talking about it. We are writing articles about it. We are teaching about it to thousands and thousands of people here. And uh, we're growing and uh, the, the energy is flowing. So that is the whole purpose of this um, university. So thank you all for um, um, joining us on this wonderful uh, morning. Or if you're in India, maybe it's nighttime and uh, allowing um, your consciousness to grow and learn and heal. So here, um, before I um, jump into to introduce our uh, guest speaker, a little bookkeeping thing. So I'm going to just start with um, the my slides and I will uh, tell you what I wanted to. So, so this is the new next quarter of Chakra Healing Program. Those of you who are, yeah, can everybody see the, Ankur, can you see the post that I'm sharing? Yeah, if you hit yeah. those three dots in the top right, maybe you can go to full screen present mode. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to show, yeah. So this is the program that is going to start for the spring quarter. We just finished uh, three quarters uh, teaching uh, chakra healing. I need this. Yeah. And uh, we are going to start April 17th, Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And um, it will be 6 p.m. for Pacific time. And, uh, you know, um, uh, early morning, I think, uh, 7, 6.30 or 7 for Indian time. And um, so this is going to be 10 session program. The first one will be introduction, followed by a little bit in-depth understanding of what is Kundalini Yoga. And then we will start with Chakra 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, every, every, every thereafter, every Wednesday. And in the last, we will be having a healing plan. So the way I, I like to teach chakras is like, you know, using evidence-based uh, modern medicine, how each chakra is connected with a particular endocrine gland in our body. So that means it is associated with a specific hormone. And when that chakra is blocked, so that means that hormones are affected and those endocrine, those specific endocrine glands are affected. And that's what leads to a host of illnesses. And in this program, you will also learn how to identify the imbalanced chakras. Um, if you if you are new to it, not, not a problem. You will be getting a lot of handouts ahead of time, ahead of the class. You're welcome to ask questions. There will be half an hour after every session allotted only for questions. So that's the most interesting part for many of the students where they openly share their, um, their problems or problems that exist in their loved ones and they want to seek answers. So in, in here, we will also be diving deep into bandhas, which is also a very crucial part of Chakra Healing uh, um, Program. So, so today's topic particularly is about gratitude and consciousness. And how is this connected to Chakra Healing? Some of you may be wondering, what has this got to do with chakras? So one of the toughest chakras to unblock or heal is Anahata Chakra. Because look at the look at the illnesses it's leading to autoimmune and cancer, two very big complex illnesses uh, in today's world. Um, if you if you're not aware of what is autoimmune illness, you may you may have heard rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus, inflammatory bowel, sarcoidosis, bronchiectasis, psoriasis, and particularly cancer with no family history. So that's that's the um, that's the caveat. 
so coming again to anahata chakra and why this is so important and crucial to understand gratitude and consciousness because anahata the heart chakra the heart center chakra is represented by these things love compassion affection sacrifice empathy forgiveness joy experiences kindness service humanity peace purity, harmony, and unity. So you will be learning um, all these uh, important representations for individual chakras. But today, I wanted to bring your attention to particularly Anahata Chakra. And this is where healing comes from. And it's one of the toughest to unblock in my experience. And uh, before we move on to Jyoti Maji, I also want to tell you, we at uh, Hindu University of America, we are organizing a Chakra Immersive Retreat at the Pine Lake Resort in Florida in June end. We are going to encourage both the old Chakra students who have already taken Chakra sessions as well as the new ones. So this is going to be in person only and we're going to have hands-on experience with individual chakras and energy manifestations. Because over the years when I've taught, I've seen a lot of people still struggle with how to breathe during the pranayams, how to place the mudras, how to chant the mantras in a particular tone. Because as we grow from muladhara to sahasrara, the tone of the mantras also change. So we are going to be learning them hands-on with more individual, one-on-one. -on -one. So don't miss this opportunity. And um, so now we will dive directly with Jyoti Maji. <laughs> Very excited to have Jyoti Ma Prasad here. I have known her for at least three years, three to four years now. And every time I meet her, the energy is infectious. <laughs> so Jyoti Manji is the founder and CEO of Gratitude and Abundance. She was also invited as a speaker recently in 2022 for the United Consciousness Conclave. And um, she, I've seen her, I've seen her, heard her speech in multiple places. She's an inspirational speaker, a visionary life coach, a humanitarian. And her vision is to awaken gratitude consciousness in the world and inspire everyone to live a happy, thriving and abundant life. So her transformation journey from a finance professional to a visionary coach is a path that is chosen by very few. And she and not many know that Jyoti Maji was diagnosed with Takayasu arthritis, which is a rare, rare form of disease. And she underwent many medical treatments for this. And during this period between life and death, she learned the or discovered the power of faith, gratitude and abundance. And also she also clearly says that one doesn't need to experience these setbacks to understand what is gratefulness and for people who don't know what is takayasus it's a rare disease of the blood vessels that uh, affecting the vessels um, that carry the blood from the heart that is the bigger the larger blood vessels sometimes it gets blocked and it can lead to high blood pressure heart failure stroke and uh, so on so following her belief um, she has given uh, she helps corporates people's individual institutions and a lot of other places she has helped them tap their unique talents and abilities and uh, i have met her so many times and i'm always always when i meet her i wanted to have her in my uh, webinar and today i'm truly blessed very excited to have jyoti maji over to Jyoti Maji, um, so before we begin with uh, her uh, questions, I want to, as a physician and as people who are in this uh, webinar, we want to know Jyoti Maji's journey from this diagnosis. How did she transform herself into a visionary coach? Did that transition happen from a guru? Did it happen through a book or did it or did some incident trigger 
for this transition to happen? So this would be my first question on behalf of me, as well as from all the, um, the, um, the participants here. So Jyotima ji, please, uh, I'm going to stop sharing and um, welcome. Thank you. Hope everyone namaste. can, uh, yeah, namaste. <laughs> namaste, namaste, Dr. Saila. And a uh, very big gratitude for Hindi USA to just giving me this opportunity. Feeling so grateful. Uh, since the music started, the energy was so beautiful. I could see the all the souls who have joined this particular moment. I think this is going to create a ripple effect of all the purpose of either it's a chakra healing and gratitude and consciousness. This is going to be something very magical, very humble. And thank you so much for making me part of this. So I could see there's so many people, there's so many souls who have joined from different part of the world. And we are not able to see each other because uh, we are not seeing the face of so many souls. But we are all connected through the energy. So when Dr. Saila, you're asking that how my journey started and why today only we are talking about Anatha and the heart chakra and gratitude consciousness. So if I look back, everything was a divine master plan. And not only for Jyotama, for every soul who has taken birth and the billion souls who have taken before me and the millions will come after me. We all have a journey. We all have here in an earth school coming to have our own lessons of life. And when we learn our own lessons, how we can teach the same lessons to our fellow souls. That's the only journey which I will share about myself. So a very beautiful life as a young, very happy Every child is a very happy child, but God has a bigger plan. So health came into between a lot of things. And the major issue came as the disease, which even pronouncing the name, the Takayasu, uh, was difficult, uh, rare disease, uh, no cure, research was on. And at the age of uh, 19 and 20, when you get your first angiography done, it is like little scary. The time where uh, the youngsters are making plans and dreams about life. What? Because I was a very ambitious girl. Uh, we are three sisters who so wanted to be the boy of the family, not knowing that girl, that woman power, the feminine power, which I talk now about it, the energy about it. So there were a lot of mismatch in the energy of within. And that uh, disease, which you say is you are a doctor, you know it much more deeper that arteries are blocked because the flow is blocked. It is all the medical terms and it is all science which was talking. But when I look back after so many years, I think all the blockages were of my emotions or my feelings. Maybe it was coming from the past karma, past lifetime. I have no idea because as a young child, you have not done anything wrong, but it was carried forward from a many past life. And the journey which has been from my being a finance professional to being what I am today is simple that what I have learned in my life during this journey, I'm passing it on. So just along when you say the chakra healing, so from the crown to the muladhar and from muladhar to crown, that's the same energy when I am feeling I'm passing on to the world. So I will not say that I chose it. Someone above has chosen this journey for us. And we have to only just become the conduit and the instrument to allow the energy to flow, the cosmic energy to flow in. We are simply a dust particle in the multi-universe, but the role we play is the is the role of the creator itself. That's why we are called the co-creator. The humans are, if we start seeing the same energy which we see in the divine in every soul, the way we say namaste, my soul is honoring your soul. So once we cleanse all our blockages, whether it's of envy, jealousy, hurt, pain, greed, anxiety, comparison, anything which is blocking to flow that divine energy, we are a divine soul. We are part of the higher consciousness and we all spread the same energy. We become the transmitter of the energy. So it's only the grace that has allowed me to be part of gratitude consciousness. And Nirmala, it's, I say not gratitude and consciousness, I say gratitude consciousness because mm -hmm. if we all put our hands on our heart 
and close our eyes for a second. The prana, the breath, it's a gift. The people look for magic and miracle. But when you put your hands on your heart and you're breathing, you're alive right now, all of us being here in a Zoom call, living, talking, discussing, it's, it's a gift. It's a miracle. Because in the same present moment, there are so many souls who wanted to live, but they have transitioned in a non-physical world. So just breathing itself, living itself is a gift. Rest everything. Mind, body, soul has been gifted by the divine. And how we use it, it's up to us. So that's a journey, which, which is the awakening by the grace. It's an acknowledgement, awakening. That ignorance has gone, that nothing belongs to me. I'm the trustee of my mind, body, and soul. And how I can use it in service of mankind and humanity, that's the purpose. Very, very beautifully said, uh, Jyoti Maji. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Moving on to the next question. Um, what uh, I know you, you are an expert. You have given speeches on this. I've heard this. What is consciousness from your perspective? Because different people have different ways of describing. Some people say spiritual consciousness. Some people will say Krishna consciousness. So what is that term meaning to you? And how would you explain it for a person, a layman, who does not understand consciousness? So uh, what you said, expert, uh, Nirmala, I'm not an expert. Uh, we are all learners. And I think we have not even touched the drop of this ocean of the wisdom and the knowledge which has already been there from you know thousand and thousand of years so as per my learning and knowledge what i understand and practice um we are all we think we are human but we are soul having a human experience and being an energy beings, because if a science also understand there's a mitochondria, like, you know, there's an energy, the koshas. So either you talk in Sanskrit, a Vedas, which told us, or the science. So this is a merger of science and spirituality. So we are all energy beings. We are all multidimensional energy beings, and we are the transmitter of the energy. So if you see the entire creation, everything is consciousness. Everything in this universe which exists, like tree also has a consciousness. There's a layer of, even it says in that even the stones have the consciousness. So there are different level of consciousness and we evolve in that consciousness. So the entire creation is the creator's consciousness called a cosmic consciousness. And we are part of it. We are part of that consciousness and that energy which we flow through us, the prana which we talk about. And the thoughts, words, and actions that we create, it is the collective consciousness that we talk about. That is my understanding. That is the energy that we are part of the, this, how many even like, you know, we don't even know that multiverses, creation, we don't even know how big it is. But we are just little part of it. But what I understand, what I can see from my five senses and from my soul, even when I close my eyes, even the dreaming state, how many things we can imagine, the vision which we create, it's all consciousness. People say visionary. I think we are all visionary, just not open the third eye chakra or we have not gone deeper into our inner journey because we all came with a unique gift. That's why, because we don't need any pan, aadhar, SSN or whatever, because when the creator sent us here, he created a unique identity that's called thumbprint. So we were born with a unique talent and skill to just go and co-create along and expand it, expand it more. And when we are awakened and aware, how can we create the ripple to awaken our next fellow human being or our soul? Anybody whom come across, how we can transmit that consciousness that we have got it. So whether you call it Krishna consciousness, divine consciousness, soul consciousness, uh, energy consciousness, everything you call, it's all energy. Here we are sitting from different part of the world and how we are transmitting the energy. Few souls. But this is all energy transmitting. We could see each other. This is like a human, this is human vision. Yes. We could have not imagined a few years back that from so many, like globe is like today, I'm not carrying the globe. Generally, I carry a globe with all my sessions that I see it like if the globe is so small, think about how small we are. But with energy centers, we are all connected. 
we are all connected with that. So this is how uh, I understand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, moving on, to, I, I will ask uh, the audience also if they have questions, but I will just finish up my uh, questions that I had uh, prepared. So moving on to the next question about gratitude. So I always find this very hard to explain the term gratitude to somebody who has just lost their loved one. How, how do we react, first of all? And uh, what words can we say to make them feel better because um, we can't say um, you know look you spent so many so much time with this loved one before then it is relating to the past how do we make them look in the future when we talk about gratitude you are, are you following what i'm saying so <laughs> so when 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 i when i encounter such people who have undergone huge losses I don't want to talk only about the past, but I want them to make look at the future. How how do I make them or how do how do people like us look into the future, which we don't know what it has? We really don't know whether it is going to be good or bad or okay. But how do we get that gratitude into the future? Huh. Uh, very uh, very tough uh, question and uh, this is where the human uh, comes to the real understanding of life and uh, uh, grief pain losing a loved one this is the one of the most difficult uh, time in the face of any any person's life it's any soul's life not only human any soul in the life so how i understand i'm just giving everything which i so when I experienced a very close encounter with understanding life and death at a very young age. So the only thing which every day when I practice gratitude and even share that I use was dream. Human birth is precious and every breath is a gift. So when we do, uh, it's like a gym. When we go to gym, we build our physical body. So gratitude is something is like a very continuous sadhana. It's a practice that you keep doing that every bit. So even for your own self and all the loved ones, because we, everything we can go know in our life, but only one thing we will not know that what, when will we be the last breath? No yes. one knows that. Yes. So uh, that is one thing that is called truth. It's called this is the sachai. This is if I've taken a birth, so I have to go. Being and the second question which you was telling is like how to, you know, uh, sit someone with grief. So that is part of our soul journey. Sometimes we cannot do much in that case, but just being with that person, just sitting with the person. Because talking doesn't work that time. Because the soul has to uh, process so much. Because the relationship has been the bonding of love, joy, gratitude. Sometimes pain also. Because there are a lo lot of times in the relationship, a lot of things are unsaid also. That's why not only gratitude. I always talk about keep sharing, keep expressing. Even you love someone, don't stop. If you appreciate someone, just do things rather than thinking of regret that I would have done that. I should have done that. I could have done that. What is the best that you can do every day in every relationship? Like how to live fully whatever day has been given. Like today, when I woke up, I always say, how can I love and how can I serve in the best possible manner that today has been given to me? Because I have no clue what will be the, will I be there for the next day or not? So when we become uh, into gratitude consciousness, we are alive every moment and doing the best we could do for our own self and everybody around with the loved ones. So that is the best we could do. Rest we have to leave yeah. on the yeah. higher power. To me. Beautiful words. And the, and the way you said, like, when you get up, you want to just focus on that day's sadhana, right? That is the, that is the focus. So very, very um, precious, um, precious words. And it is, uh, it can carry a lot of um, uh, weightage, especially for people undergoing grief and loss. <laughs> you know, it's a very tough time. It's a very, very tough, tough time. So um, for any, um, uh, your sadhana, we want to know, I want to know about your sadhana, your personal guru. Do you want to share something like that? Like, do you have a daily sadhana or spiritual practice that you do? Or is there a guru that you particularly uh, adore? Uh, yeah. Please share your experiences. Uh, 
yes, I think uh, all of us, uh, the entire universe is flowing into inflow and outflow, input and output. So what we receive, uh, we pass on. So the grace is like a sun. I think you, Guru, I'll come to personal, but the sun, the light goes to everyone. So the grace is always there. But the only thing, are we ready to receive or not? So, But when we are ready, uh, some Guru or um, power is already walking with you. The faith is that, that whether you connect to that. So for me, uh, my guru, if I say it's like, a, I think a lot of people may know and not know, Shirdi Sai uh, is a saint of uh, India. And um, the lesson and the message of Shraddha and Saburi, the faith and the patience, uh, has been uh, my pillar of life and how I could have endured everything um, with the grace. Then your first guru, your parents, how yes. they come, their life lessons, how they stand as a support system, your family. So with the higher guru, higher consciousness, then your family and the support system and few mantras of life that you just simply start following, love all, serve all, help ever and hurt never. So these are the things which you do and get into the meditation practice, connecting to your own divine soul. And the second and the very important aspect of my uh, practice is forgiveness that I do uh, without fail because I have no idea in any lifetime, this lifetime, intentionally, unintentionally, knowingly, unknowingly, with my thoughts, words and actions, I must have hurt and harmed some souls in some way. So forgiveness is one exercise that I do on a regular basis and counting blessing. With every breath, I count my blessing and any work I do, that's only on the grace because it's all a gift. I don't own anything of it. So these are my practices on a daily basis. Uh, um, when I fill myself, then I can, the cup can overflow. That's beautiful. Well said. <laughs> beautiful. And um, um, how, how are you practicing that today? Like, do you have some kind of uh, physical sadhana to, to that, like a breathing exercise or... Yeah, just uh, two things. Simply uh, sitting in silence. That's the sadhana. Sad because unless until because all the time talking is like so many noise all around. Uh, so sitting in silence is the sadhana to he can hear my soul voice and the higher which is talking to me because all the downloads come at that moment. All the vision, thoughts, ideas, dreams awaken in that moment, and then journaling helps you to just whatever download because it can go in a within seconds like. A lot of people dream so much, but they don't put into real manifestation on the material world to experience their gift. So I write a lot. So journaling is another practice that I do. Yes. And uh, writing gratitude note is something which it is a regular practice. So journaling is a very big process that a I very, take. Very important point. I think you brought up a very important point, which I keep telling uh, all my chakra students, uh, the six steps of sadhana, which is daily yoga, daily meditation, Daily morning, make a list of things to do. Daily spend few minutes with nature. Daily journal your thoughts. Daily follow sattvic diet. And daily thank someone before going to bed or some, before um, before the day ends. So very, very beautifully you put in all those uh, important uh, messages in the uh, conversation. I'll add one thing which you said, Nirmala, sattvic diet. So nowadays when I see, like everybody's talking about food and diet, but when yes. we say diet, so diet is not only food. What are we watching? What are we thinking? In whose company? So diet is all emotions, energy, seeing, watching, listening. So we have to be very, uh, very conscious of what we are absorbing with all the five senses, not only the food which is going inside, the thoughts which we are creating, what watching, what see, even the Netflix or any serials, movie, what are you watching? So what are you absorbing? Yes. That 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 is very yes. crucial. That's a diet also to be taken care of. Yes, yes, yes. Very important point. Yeah, I, I keep telling that to my kids also. Like if you're watching something on iPad, you know, watch something that is going to enrich your wisdom. So very important point. And um, and also books, do you suggest or do you have any favorite books? Even those are very important. What books we read? Do you have anything, any particular I, author that you? Uh, Saila, I think um, if you could see, uh, 
this is one thing which I can do uh, 24 by 7 because <laughs> when I realized when I was a finance professional I used to think I only used to uh, you know uh, read only about finance stock market investment you know you have that kind of, because I did my MSc yeah. mathematics so so much of an academic academic kind of a thing you uh, have studied but uh, on my this journey is like it is like the ocean you can get into at least one book just pick up and then you will find a series of book to just read so if we come with our own self like our uh, you know um, our, our everything is like a gita ramayana even durga ship like this is a now is a like a navratra a lot of people know the more you read the more you understand there's so much to learn even one mantra can help or yeah auto i think somebody has autobiography of yogi is there power of suffering right. whether it's, it's an indian or western like you know it's a merger because even our vedanta all the westerners here they have been so beautifully explained our uh, things which we cannot do understand a lot of sanskrit and all because we never got into that now we are learning and understanding that one mantra of om bhur bhuva swah tat savitur varediyam bhargo deva siddhi mai dhyo hina prachodayat can be so powerful even we pick up one mantra for a day that just brings that energy one book we read gita one shloka you read start understanding that particular part of it i think it is so beautiful and there's one book on gratitude also which is like which created a lot of things the there's a book called magic how to do a regular practice of gratitude because you know you have to calculate habit like i get upset what gratitude is there i am stuck in a traffic jam you're asking me to practice gratitude you have to say it's like i'm sitting in a car i'm listening a music i have a car i have yes. a car i'm even in that moment i have developed patience to be in the line it's like even in that moment where you in the toughest of the toughest situation that you can count your blessing because till we are alive there is still so much to be grateful for so mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. um, the book i think i can just pick up few books you know there is a um, there is one book by eckhart tolle by the new earth uh, that is also very useful because it's science I, are you uh, able to are you able to type in jyotima ji the i, I, I can think i can who john let me see where uh, do i type yeah, is it is it one way that can i send it to you people, and you can share later can i send it to you yeah yeah tell me yeah. tell me i can type yeah tell me yeah hmm. you can okay there is a book called man search for meaning it's by victor k frankl so this is one of the man book where search. somebody was in a concentration camp and how a person mm. man search for ya yeah, man search for meaning you can just go ahead with that also there is a spiritual and solution and you said something about magic also right magic yeah the magic by yeah i should see where is the book let's keep getting the books also let me stand and get some books there is very very beautiful the spontaneous healing of belief oh let me get some books yeah so these are some of the books that jyotima ji is suggesting which i have um, uh, typed in for folks who i can are, i can uh, just read the learning. book uh, the journey within oh, is by is, radha yeah i've heard about this journey yeah the journey within yeah. by radha nath swami i think even you start listening to him very small small talks i think uh-huh. it will definitely shift Beautiful. shift it okay Yeah, yeah, I heard this one. Yeah, 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 and this is another very beautiful book, a, a new earth awakening to your life's purpose. A new earth, okay. And even uh, you know, uh, you can Paramahansa Yoga Nand, Swami Vivekananda, you know, yes. even P. J. Yes. Abdul Kalam. I think the books are so many books. Then by Deepak Chopra, there is a book called The Seven Spiritual Law of Success. This is all coming from our ancient wisdom. everything what i'm talking here yes it's all there in our yes. ancient wisdom which everybody in their own form has given it gifted to the world bhagavad gita i think i don't have to say about it uh this is our 
karma all the karma comes from our bhagavad gita you know the bhakti <laughs> karma yog oh. you know so and there's another book i think by dr joe dispenza when you get into the science of understanding you are the place go making your mind matter because dr saila you will also i think in the medicine you read all yes, the yes yes i'm 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 noting it down <laughs> one of my friend with the doctor she I'm... shared ki some of the patient uh, come ki you have to give me medicine but the medicine is not needed so you have to give some kind of a, uh, you know pseudo medicine like you know this is but it's not a real medicine, medicine. to make them feel better yes. yeah so there is a book yes. called you, you are the place you, uh, making your mind matter B- wonderful wonderful choices of books thank yeah. you so much yeah a second can be uh, the seven divine laws to awaken your best self this is by swami muktanand the seven seven divine laws okay mm-hmm. best self but there can be so many i think uh, books are like and one more you can write there is a spiritual thank solution you. to every problem so this is for people who are joining late so that they can uh, because it's very difficult to uh, because the books are like millions and we want the ones that have influenced uh, you know great people like you and everyone so that we can acquire that same <laughs> that same uh, uh, same bit of knowledge so what is the last one you said jyoti madhi there is a spiritual there is a solution. spiritual solution to every problem by dr vain dyer wisdom of ages um which he has shared and they're very beautiful book uh from dr dyer i think once you see i think even any of the books which you'll pick up uh it will open multiple doors for many books you to read so i think it's kalkate na um, you get into the addiction so addiction of that knowledge like more yes. more you get hungry yeah. for the knowledge yeah so for because this is the, about uh, healing and gratitude for bhagavad gita i found this um, uh, there are so many um, gita books Bhaj. written by different uh, uh, gurujis but i like the one by swami prabhu pada so this is something you liked it did you read it swami prabhu pada's so this one is um, uh, explained in um, um verses like you know for every um, uh, gita verse there is a page long of explanation in english so it uh, it helps us understand even the sanskrit terms word by word they have translated in english and also they have explained a full page about that verse so i would recommend if anybody wants to study the gita in um, simpler but in depth form then this would be a very good um, very good book so thank you all and we will move on to questions if anybody has um, q and a's anybody wants to oh here it is q and a is a separate one yeah um, so let's see okay there is some question there is an interesting question for jyoti ma ji <laughs> okay if anyone says anything to me which hurts me i am unable to forgive them even I, they are my parents relatives i see them every day so how do i forgive them <laughs> <laughs> uh, whomsoever have asked this question it is for everyone, everyone. yes it yes. is for every soul human soul because mm-hmm. in animal world i have not uh, then maybe they must also having some kind of a thing but for human soul this is question is for everyone okay so who has asked this question uh, so this dr is, uh, sushma ekati she ah. asked this question that uh, if they hurt me i am unable to forgive them even if they are very close to me ah, okay so how do i how do i do that mm-hmm. so so while i am answering this question because i have worked on this journey and still working on this journey uh, of uh, hurt pain and how the soul contract work so i will share whatever knowledge uh, and understanding i have so the learning of the process is uh, they we have soul families like you know in a bigger soul family so we start with the inner soul family then so the most 
loving people, the most beautiful people come together as a first soul family. So it can be your mom, dad, husband, in-laws, uh, sisters, siblings, and all, they all come together. But when we take birth here uh, in this human, when the soul takes birth in the human journey, there are a lot of lessons we all need to learn. Because in the past life, we also had some different roles to play. So here we have come as so there are two kind of a teachers in this earth school. So if uh, when you all have gone to a school, so they were very sweet teachers who taught us like, you know, and we learned it. But if you had a student who like didn't learn the lesson which was supposed to be learned in the class, there was a strict teacher also. Yes. So like, you know, sometimes we were not run, learning that, you know, tables and all nine tables. So somebody has to sit. No, you have to learn because you have to cross to from second to third grade, third to fourth. So in our soul evolution process uh, in this journey of lifetimes, all these soul comes, the people who come, who seems to be so tough, so hurtful, giving you so much pain, suffering. They are the toughest teacher because as a soul contract, we didn't knew how to learn our lessons, how to open our heart. So here comes the forgiveness because we have to break the cycle. Because if somebody hurt me, what happens in the cycle chakra? I will also like to hurt the person. I will like to abuse the person. Somebody hit me, I will also. So we are in the same cycle. I will give you pain, you will give me pain. So when the soul chooses to be a path breaker, cycle breaker or generational trauma breaker. So in the lineage, this pain is transferring from one person to other person to the generation is transferring the pain. One soul takes a charge that I will break this trauma. I will break this pain and start giving love and forgiveness to the person who is hurting you the most because you learned the lesson that I don't need to add to this karma and I take responsibility of my life. He or she is hurting is because that is the pain which the person is carrying because I can only give you what I have. Correct. So when you start seeing like physical pain can be seen. If I'm hurt, Dr. Saila can say, Jyotama, your hands are not working because, but if someone, someone is emotionally in suffering and pain and with that kind of emotional disease, that is not visible. How it is visible? In anger, in hurt, in their words. Words are so powerful. People don't even understand when they speak how much they are hurting others. And this is called consciousness. When you are aware, when you are aware that I am an conscious soul. I am a divine soul. No matter what the world do, what my no matter what my parents do, what my sister do, what my sister-in-law. So I just give them love. But the only thing is, till you are in that high energy, you have to keep that aura. Like you have to be in silence. You have to keep away from, if you're not able to handle that negative energy. So it is like, till I am not filled, like a bankrupt person cannot donate and be generous that's clear first mm -hmm. i have to fill myself with divine love i have to forgive myself for all the hurts and pain i have given because we are the self-critic our own self we don't value ourselves we don't respect ourselves we don't love ourselves and then the world reflects in different formats trust me whomsoever asked this question love yourself unconditionally forgive yourself fall in love with yourself and trust me you'll start giving love to the people because you'll understand it's not their human age it's their soul age they're still young in that journey so we are not judging them because we are all in the journey no judgment i'm not higher and somebody is superior and inferior no it's a soul journey and with the time if i am in the high vibration and i have awakened myself gradually they will also be awakened that's their own divine timing send love, give forgiveness. Mentally, you can say, I ask for forgiveness. If any lifetime I have hurt and harmed you, I ask for forgiveness. Please forgive me. I send you love. You be at peace and I be at peace. Thank this you. is Thank for you. everyone. I do it every day because we are living in this world where so many people, even close to close and far to far. If you see the news, how much pain and suffering sometimes you hear, what can we do? As a collective forgiveness, may all the soul be awakened in the divine consciousness and we can live in peace and harmony. That's a prayer we can do for each other. Yes. Well said. Well said. Thank you. And uh, Sushma also asked, what is sadhana? I will explain what I teach my students, Sushma. So sadhana is something like spiritual practices that we do 
every single day of our life. So when we talk about practices, um, in, in yoga, we say, okay, when we sleep, we shower daily, we uh, eat daily. No, Even though nobody sends us reminders, we do them. Similarly, that is for your physical body. Similarly, for your spiritual body, we need to do sadhana every day to keep our spirit active. So that is what is called sadhana. So that's where I, I talked about the six steps of sadhana. And that is what I teach even to all my meditation students, chakra students, yoga students. So daily yoga, meditation, daily morning, make a list of things to do so that you don't just get up and run to work. So have a plan. Daily spend few minutes with nature. Even if you're drinking chai outside, that's good. And daily um, uh, journal your thoughts. Daily be grateful to something and daily follow sattvic diet. So this is something that this is the nourishment we give for our soul, for our spirit. So that is called sadhana. And... Um, Let's see who else has questions. Okay, Sushma is, uh, I think it's, uh, she was responding to your uh, thought process, Jyotima Ji. She's asking how to love myself. <laughs> uh -huh. Wait a minute. Just give me, this is the biggest exercise I have to do. Just give me a minute. Yeah, she, 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 it's the same person who asked the previous question. Uh, we are not able to see them. Uh, Sushma, I will just simply ask, uh, do you see mirror? Do you see me? How many? All of us, not Sushma. It's not point, point, yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So, sim oh, yes, you, you see mirror, na? So, what do you see in the mirror? Even Ankur is smiling. Ankur is thinking, you know. <laughs> I also see mirror, but, but what do I see? Tell me. What do you see in the mirror? Someone has to answer. Either type it or... You see Sushma? What do you see in Sushma? Yeah, hope no, no. Somebody is saying, hope no, no. Prayer is very powerful. I will talk about it. It's very beautiful. So I'll tell you. So one like, very beautiful exercise. This is like a mirror. Okay. So why this is important? Uh, mirror. Uh, the outer world, what we see, is the reflection of my inner world. The outer world which we see, the entire creation, like it's like so many things. But why we see few things only? Like why few of us are sitting here? Why few of us? There's a purpose. There is some alignment to our soul that few of us are sitting from different part of the world and talking about it. So when I see in the mirror, Sushma, I simply say myself, I'm a divine soul. I'm so beautiful. I'm gifted child. What is that I have that I can give it to the world? So you yourself is so precious to your own self. You know your self-worth. Because... 80 to 90 percent time you are with your own self and most of the people are self-critic. This is not good. I don't look good. I don't have that. I don't have that skill. She is good. He is good. That is doing good. So we are focusing on the entire world, but there is no time to focus on our own self. And every day when you see in the mirror and say, I'm getting better and better and better and better and better every day. So you're investing in your own self, in your own growth. Because most of the time, we are focusing on everyone else around. So the most important part of your life is you can only give to others when you give to your own self. So at least in 24 hours, start with 30 minutes because a lot of people come to me and when they say, Jyotam, I don't have time. You tell me to do practice in the morning. You tell me to do in the practice in the night. If you don't have time for your own self, how do you expect anything else from others? If you cannot give your time to your own self, then you say, he doesn't appreciate me. She doesn't like me. You know, you have all the answers from different sets of people. Think about it. Are you giving time? to? Are you appreciating your own self? Do you think you are valuable? Do you exist for a purpose here? So loving yourself is respecting yourself, knowing your own worth, recognizing your own abilities, skills and talents because every person is so unique. There is no match. There is no comparison. There is no comparison. We are born so unique. So Sushma, now with the mirror, every day you have to do a self-talk and then 
finding a self discovery to find your best self and then go out in the world and you see every relationship will heal once you work on your own self every relationship outside it's a magic you have to experience this magic and then tell me uh, saila i need to know that how is the magic working yes yes definitely definitely and one more that thing was, i will i will uh, that was wonderful before we get another question let me drop some details in the chat so these are the details of the course it's going to be wednesday as mentioned you can okay. link right okay. there and then also the chakra healing retreat there's a link to see some more details and let me just launch a quick poll let us know if you're interested in this course chakra healing gratitude and consciousness and if you're interested in a particular program uh just fill it out let us know we have over 70 people with us right now glad that you have all joined us and um please <laughs> this conversation has been amazing right uh, be a part of it join it have a Take the time to d dive deeper and engage uh, with Hindu University, with Dr. Sailaji on this important yeah. so, subject. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Uncle. So I also wanted to uh, show these books to Sushma and others who want to know. So these are the books that are available on Amazon. The Why Behind Cancer, Chakra Handbook. So you can, um, it's not mandatory. You have to read this book for the chakra healing, but it helps. This book is the theoretical, covers the theoretical knowledge about chakra healing. And uh, you will be learning the practical aspect of it in the um, chakra healing program conducted by HUA. And for uh, Sushma, this book, 21 Steps to Reprogram Your Mind, it involves all the questions that you are asking in a much detailed format, including both yoga psychology and modern psychology. So all these are available on Amazon. They're written by me and uh, you can contact me if you want to get more information. These are the books that I want to publish next year uh, because of the problems that I see mostly in, in the community. Obesity, which is the, um, the biggest problem right now. And then the science of Kundalini, something that I want to teach in the subsequent years after Chak because this is Chakra Healing is like the um, the high school level of uh, Kundalini Yoga and uh, the PhD is Chakra Healing is Kundalini Yoga. So that's something that I wanted to share. And um, and somebody wanted to know about this retreat, right? Um, I don't know who was that. Uh, yeah, so Aarti Joshi was asking about the retreat in June. So Aarti, we don't have the full details about what is the um, uh, morning till evening, but it's going to be from June 27th to 30th. And it's uh, just note down the place. It's in Florida. At, it's a resort that is um, part of uh, HUA uh, University. And uh, we, we are going to have um, chakra healing as well as another Ayurveda or um, Panchakarma slash something like that. So we're going to mix. Uh, so people who are coming there are uh, fully energized as well as there is uh, cleansing happening, uh, detox happening. So simultaneous cleansing and healing program. So that is what we are thinking. Um, so I will be there and we will be doing hands-on. Um, you know, I will be watching how you are practicing the breathing techniques, how you're practicing the three bandhas and uh, how how uh, where are the challenges because online uh, my uh, observation is very restricted because you know it is uh, so here we will be doing hands on i will be doing corrections and we can even have one on one conversations because many of my students eventually like to talk to me one on one about their blockages so all those things we will be dealing directly at the retreat so going back to questions, I'll stop share here. And um, Amu is asking about my journey. Dr. Sahila, we also want to know your journey. Uh, thank you, Amu, for um, asking that question. So I, I 10 years ago when I lost my father, I was in my regular nine to four job as a physician. 
and I didn't realize I was, I went into depression, even being a physician, you know, there was lack of energy in the morning. Uh, there were periods of crying. Um, I would not enjoy being with my family. I would uh, often find myself being lonely. And so all these symptoms then, um, you know, uh, clued in because I was depressed after losing my father. And I was started on three antidepressants. And slowly as I started seeing the side effects, I did I didn't feel better initially. But then there was weight gain, hair loss, skin changes, thyroid problems, sleep issues. So many came on. And that's when uh, I'd, uh, I was already into yoga. I was already practicing yoga every day, but I didn't go into the depth of chakras. So when I started experiencing these, that's when I started diving deep into chakra healing, started reading books, uh, went repeatedly to India to learn. And uh, after three to four years, uh, I was completely pill free. So uh, and since then, I have not needed to take antidepressants. So I just wanted to explain my journey in a quick um, few sentences. Of course, the, you will find a lot of it uh, explained in more detail in my books. Uh, even in Chakra Handbook, I will explain what are the uh, experiences I had after Chakra Healing. So all those things you will be um, learning in detail in the, the books. So Dharmi is asking, how is this healing technique different from pranic healing and Reiki? So Dharmi, pranic healing and Reiki also we will be talking. It is also a type of energy healing, definitely, like chakra healing. But in chakra healing program, we will go into the depth, the science of it. For example, I was telling you how Muladhara is the root chakra, the foundation chakra. And this is located at the level of testicles for males. For females, it is at the level of the anal opening. So this is very closely linked with the hormone testosterone. So you will learn how it is connected with your emotions. So if, if um, then this is the survival chakra, you know, for um, uh, protection, for um, um, security, for borders, for um, for food, it it, uh, it um, uh, for family, bringing together family members. All these are survival um, chakra. So when that's blocked, you're going to face either psychological illnesses or social illnesses. Now, social illnesses. What are the social illness we see today? Gun shooting, of uh, almost ninety nine percent of them are psych are psychologically affected terrorist activities, rapists, uh, abusers, narcissistic personality. So all these are social disorders. Psychological disorders are depression, insomnia, uh, anxiety. All these things are psychological illnesses. So these are the ones. So like this, we will. it is very in-depth compared to pranic healing and Reiki. And from my understanding, pranic healing and Reiki someone else does on on the person who is suffering or going through but in here in chakra healing you're going to be healing yourself because you're the person who knows your body and mind the best i can tell you the techniques and solutions but you know once you practice it on yourself then you are going to experience the change the power of energy healing so that is the difference. So in Reiki and uh, Pranic, you know, somebody, you go to some person, expert, and they do it for you. And uh, you may feel the change, you may not feel the change, or it may be temporary, or you know, some, there may be some questions. But here it is, it's about how well you understand your body and mind. So it is a permanent change. So the more you dive deep into it, the changes will be more the transformation will start happening once the transformation happens the energy the chakras get aligned and the energy starts flowing in the sushumana nadi so i don't want to de de talk too much of sanskrit terms because uh, you know it will feel very complex right now but once you get into the sessions and you see the pictures and handouts and uh, you will be able to like how i shared a sample about Anatha Chakra, you will see a lot more handouts in the sessions. And then it will it will be very simplified for you. 
So that is about, that is the difference. Um, any other questions that I missed, Ankur? I had, um... Well, the pricing of the course is $300. We haven't set the price for the retreat. Uh, the first one was about $1,300. Uh, it, it was so amazing, that retreat. Highly recommend. We're going to do more of these, and I'm glad, Dr. Sileja, you're going to be offering one. And again, those details are to be figured out. So, and, the, and I also want to tell you the retreat prices that Ankur is saying include stay and food, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So it is not just about the programs and the number of faculty you'll be. You'll be meeting a lot of faculty members of um, uh, HUA. But the price that Ankur is quoting includes the accommodation, which is like a four-star, three to four-star uh, resort, and Sattvic, three star. Let's um, not oversell. And, it's it's a Pine Lake retreat. It's outdoors. It's a nice chalet, but it is small and it is you know outdoors. So there's yes, it's a lot of things to do outdoors, and also they prepare fresh Sattvic food there. Correct. That's what. Uh, and I've heard very good things about the diet and food. So people love. Uh, and uh, and the most important thing is you're hanging out with like-minded people. There is a lot of interaction, a lot of um, exchange of um, energy, exchange of um, um, power. And, you know, it's, it's very interesting. So that's uh, that's the... Uh, interesting part about these uh, in-person retreats. I'm very excited about that. <clears throat> and um, neither have prerequisites. Person. So if you haven't taken any courses before, it's fine. You can start and jump in. These are great yeah, places yeah. to start, actually. And then yeah, you don't you don't need any. Uh, even if you are not practiced yoga, it's fine because I will be teaching like as if I'm teaching a middle school or a high school uh, person, but. How deep you want to go is up to you. So I'll be sharing books that are, you know, uh, really in depth about chakras. You don't have to read that, but if you want to, you can get those books and uh, go into the depth. So it's it's up to you how, uh, what range you want to go. You want to just get introduced, then that's fine. If you want to get introduced and practice, that is also fine. If you want to get introduced, practice on yourself and learn to practice on others then you have to read more books so it's a it really depends on you know what is your uh, interest so chakra healing how are chakras integrated in hinduism do we have deities yes we do have deities for individual chakras muladhara is uh, ganesh ji swadishtana is always associated with estrogen the fem feminine hormone so it is um, Parvati in uh, law, the um, uh, Parvati for Swadishtana. And then when you come to Manipura, it is Goddess Lakshmi because you are getting abundance. So it is Lakshmi like that. There is several approaches in um, each chakra and each one. When you come to Anahata, which we discussed today, it is Lord Hanumanji. Because if you see Hanumanji, he will always open his heart and there will be abundance of love flowing for Sri Ram. And uh, he is one of the bhaktas who has individual temples compared to other um, gods. So he is considered uh, uh, like a god because of his um, unconditional love. So he is. Um, so that is that is how we correlate with each chakras and uh, Hindu deities. And uh, there was a question I saw for Jyoti Maji also. Mm, Lina, Lina, yeah, Lina is asking Jyotima ji, Gunas and Kosha will definitely play a part if you're not achieving what you talked about. True? I, I didn't get the question. Did you understand, Jyotima ji? I don't know. So uh, I, I think, think... Jyotima ji was talking about Kosha, I think, right? Gunas and Kosha in some part. So. Kosha, I think energy cells, Kosha, that I was not getting into the anemic, all the Koshas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I was getting into the energy cells of the body. So I was talking about that uh, energy cells, energy. trillion cells in the body that. Right, right. Yeah. So that is what. Uh, um, so there's another question from uh, Ishkwaku. Is sadhana a self-introspection? Uh, sadhana is 
uh, Ishkwakuji, it is for the enhancement of your spiritual self. So, so we do every day, you know, sleeping, eating, um, we do our job. All these things are satisfying our physical needs, right? We are um, engaging with our partners. We are going to parties, eating, socializing. So what do we do to enhance our spiritual self? That is called sadhana. So many times we don't consider it as a practice because we are not taught about that in schools and colleges. But as we get older, we start to feel lonely. We start to feel like as if, you know, nobody cares about me and all this whole life I have to, it's like a burden. The life is like, you know, like a burden and I'm not able to move on to the next stage. So that is when these spiritual practices are going to help us enhance our spiritual self. And it is called like Atma in Bhagavad Gita. It is called um, um, individual soul. Um, you know, so those are different terms that are used for uh, the spiritual self. So that is what sadhana is. So this sadhana is for enhancement of the spiritual self. Jyotima ji, you have any other explanation for sadhana, please? Uh, nothing. Uh, what I understand, like when we were a child, like the, every school we have gone. So it was starting with the morning prayer. Like, you know, every school was a morning prayer. So even in that, even mom and dad, they were doing some kind of a puja. So initial age... The kids have been taught. But once you come into that root chakra thing, like I have to strive, I have to get something for my living, food, uh, job, profession. So you start getting disconnected with the higher self because you are lost in that moon identity. So it's a phase of life where uh, with the teenage and now it's getting more and more with the teenage where you said everything is a burden. Life becomes a burden and you're disconnected with the higher self. So that is how when we say sadhana, connecting back to your inner self. So it's like getting back to your soul, listening to your own soul voice, praying, meditating, yoga, whatever brings you back to the energy that it's like charging your mobile. Like, you know, because if it's not charged, it may, there are millions of functions in that mobile, it will not function well. So that's the charge that we do with sadhana is like a commitment to our own self to live a fulfilling life. You know, that's the precious fulfilling. So it's a it's a pure commitment to yourself, giving time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Aarti is saying uh, she missed the chakra part in the last retreat. Yes. So this, this retreat, we want to focus on a different set of things, uh, Aarti. So we will be um, focused a lot on um, chakra part and then we um, we are going to add another element to it. So I, when the whole um, retreat is uh, planned, we will definitely have another webinar, right, Ankur? I think we will have another webinar maybe uh, in the next two or three weeks to give you the full details of what we have planned. Please join that webinar and ask more questions so we can help you understand. Um, we want to have we want to have this retreat a unique experience, different from what you attended before. That is the goal. So the and um, Kunda ji is asking, give me information about chakra book. So Kunda ji, the chakra handbook is. Um, is how you will understand the yoga chakras from a scientific perspective. Um, and so it is a theoretical aspect of the chakras. So uh, you won't be learning what are the asanas and what are the mantras and mudras. All that will be taught in the chakra healing program here in HUA. But if you want to understand um, how these chakras connect with your emotions, or how it is connected with your body, or how these cause diseases, then that is what you will be finding in the Chakra Handbook. So when you combine both the theory and the practical aspect of it, you will understand a full, um, a full dimension of the chakras, and you will be able to experience the energy healing. So I hope that answers your question. Um, Ankur, did I leave any questions is there anything that you want to address no i think uh we covered it all um as you said there's going to be much more of this we're just at the beginning of the journey and of course we can't get into all of that in one webinar jyoti maji thank you so much for joining us as our special guest it's, it's a blessing amazing 
to have somebody of your knowledge and experience and, and the way that you shared it was beautiful. Sahila Ji, you keep this up. Keep on bringing uh, these enlightened souls uh, to yes, share last with time, our yes, audience. Last time we had Siddha Ji, this time Jyotima Ji. And I, Jyotima Ji, I have to thank you for the mirror thing. That is something that is so simple and something that all of us must practice. So the mirror thing of how you how you look at your own self. Because so many of us, I know, because I have uh, consultations who come to me and say they're afraid of looking at themselves in the mirror. Can you believe? So they will be like, I, I don't want to look at myself in the mirror. You know, I'm so scared. So there are people who have so much of self-hate, self-pity, um, and lack of self-worth. And those things are, um, and the mirror example that you showed is something that I will never forget. <laughs> so thank you so much. And um, somebody in the first question, please take session of such spiritual healing, sadhana. Yeah, sure. We will do more of that. And we will be teaching, you will be hearing the word sadhana in my every session of chakra healing. So please, uh, <laughs> this is just an, uh, you know, like an um, brief, um, introduction but uh, of course chakra healing is all about um, sadhana and um, the sadhana can be doing six simple practices or practicing the higher levels of pranayams bandhas meditation so there is a wide range of sadhana that you can uh, learn and um, use it as much as you want to so that's all uh, included as part of the Chakra Healing Program. So please, everyone, if you haven't enrolled, uh, you should um, enroll. Um, Jyotima Ji, somebody is asking for your phone number. I will leave it up to you if you want to no, share. Please, it. please, you can share my number. And yeah. uh, before I say something, Dr. Saila, yes, one yes. more book. It's a very important book. Yes, uh, yes. You Can Heal Your Life by uh, Louis Hay. I think uh, she is, I put it in the Western world, uh, Louis Hay, she has been the pioneer in a lot of work of self-healing, self-love, mirror work. So if you start reading this book, then you get so many other books to read. You can heal your life. So you have the power within to heal your life. That's a self-discovery so journey. So yeah. with Jyotima Ji's permission, I will share her number. So if anybody wants to contact her directly, you can do that. I always use the word, just be the light. We are all the light of divine. And if we have been ignited, we have to just bring the light among all the soul, which we are in the dark or any other pain and suffering. We've all been there. We all have been there. So we know what it means to be in the dark. So how to continue the energy is like, pass it on, pay yes. it forward, create the ripple. Don't stop. Yes. Most of the people stop. If mine is done, it's done. No, you cannot stop. If you have got it, you have to pass it on. That's the flow uh, we have uh, to get. One last question, Jyotima Ji. I think it's a good question. I can't, I don't know the name of the person. It says how to distinguish selfishness versus loving your own self <laughs> so beautiful i think uh it's a very uh thin line and understanding i am only good is selfishness i am good and everyone else is also good it's self-love so when you say that been like a lot of people say that now the word in psychology narcissism is coming narcissist traits when you are only uh, you know me 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 no we yeah i could see myself in nirmal i could see myself in ankur you know i could see myself because not on a physical level the soul level we could see that energy transforming because we are all on a path of serving on a bigger purpose on a collective good so i could see myself so that's self-love that outpours outside selfish is like i close so me m goes down when you do so my when i talk about me to we journey like we include everyone. When you say Hanumanji, when the heart is open, you include everyone. So that's self-love. I'm in love and everybody is part of it. So then you start seeing beauty in everything, in every soul all across and bring the beauty of that person out. Yeah. That's the difference. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful explanations. 
Ankur, should we um, say we will um, end the meeting now or you have anything, any other uh, shout outs? Oh, and also- Just shout I out want... to you, Dr. Sayalaji. Thank you for uh, <laughs> also, running this. Yeah, also I want to tell fun. people that we have the WAVES conference, which I'm very oh. excited. Yeah, in September. So HUA's, uh, I love the uh, upcoming activities that we have here in HUA. So remember the Chakra Retreat in June and September, we are having the WAVES conference for the first time in uh, US, which is the Vedic, um, which is um, Association for Vedic Science. So there will be a lot of eminent speakers coming from all over the world, particularly from India here at, uh, it's going to be at the Florida, correct? At the our resort, yeah, at the Pine Lake Resort. So please, um, you know, uh, again, more information will be coming in our next webinar. We will be sharing details about that. So you all can join uh, the WAVES conference also, okay? So that'll be in September. <laughs> yes, thank you for that question yeah, and September. bringing that up. The HUA calendar is packed. We're going to be yes, out at different yes, events, uh, yeah, so many associations, events. local mandirs. If you have something that you'd like us to participate at, join it, set up a table, hand out flyers. I do that also. Uh, we're really trying to uh, get out there and share. And uh, we'll share those details in emails. And uh, all right, Zeal, I'll follow up with you specifically so that you have it. Um, thank you, everyone. Namaste, Danielad. It's it's my thank pleasure you. and honor to be hosting these webinars. Thank you, Jyoti Maji. Blessed again. and grateful. Truly thank blessed you. and grateful. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so you, much. Uncle. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Uncle. For making this a wonderful event. Thank you.